When we get to four electron groups, this is the first time we have to have a three-dimensional geometry. We can't just have it in the plane of the paper. We saw that earlier with the tetrahedral geometries. Now, when we're trying to draw something in three dimensions, that means you either have to manage to get it with a perspective drawing, kind of like this, where we can imply that this one is going back into the paper just a little bit. This one's coming completely out of the paper. And this one's going back into the paper more. This one's laying along the paper. The thing is, realistically, that's going to be really challenging for us to draw on a regular basis, especially without having that shaded um, triangle pyramid there. So what we need to pull off is some way to have an easy perspective drawing. And for that, as always, we have notation. Now, in order to draw these in three dimensions, you've got to use these arrow, uh, these uh, bond types. So if it's in the plane of the paper, we will give it just a straight line like we've always done. If it's coming out of the paper, we're going to be like Grover on Sesame Street and say, near, far. Wide end coming out of the paper. Narrow end would be sitting at the paper, sticking out, gets wider. So if we were doing it with those wedges, we would have drawn it like this. This one would be one of our wedged ones. Now we'll just pretend that this was totally in the plane of the paper for a moment, and that this one was too. Because remember, if you have a plane, in other words, a piece of paper, you can always set two of them to be sitting in the plane, that we only have one coming out of the paper and one going back into the paper, which is going to be the easiest way for you to draw it. Now we only need to use our remaining notation once to show that this is going back into the paper. And for that, we could do kind of like a, a reversed wedged dotted line going back into the paper. But you'll notice that's pretty slow to draw. You saw me drawing it. And it took a while. And it doesn't really give us much more perspective. So almost always, when you're doing it by hand, you're just going to use a dotted line. But when you have the opportunity to do it digitally, you'll make sure the fat side is on the central atom and the dotted line is going further back into the page as it gets narrower. Which makes sense, you know, since we're trying to draw a perspective. That's the notation that we're going to use when we try to draw these in three dimensions. So here's an example of that sketched out. Now, I often see people trying to put three or four different things, just pointing all kinds of different directions. Don't do that. Follow what I just sketched out for you a second ago. Put two of them in the plane of the paper to start with, because that'll make things very easy. And you really do want very easy. You don't want to be showing off how clever you are in your drawings. Because in a moment here, we're going to get more complicated when we start chaining more and more atoms together and making these molecules much, much bigger. If you're already spending all your thought on how this clever arrangement looks in three dimensions when it's only four atoms, we till it gets to be 15. That's going to be incredibly challenging to draw. So instead, stick them in the plane of the paper like this, have one of the remaining pointing forward, one of the others pointing backward. And of course, notice that means they're going to be over here on the same side of the atom pointing back and forth, almost like a fin. That's how you want to be thinking of it when you sketch these out. Um, otherwise, you'll be drawing some really creative but very wrong shapes. Uh, one of the frequent ones that I see people do, maybe they'll have a wedged, sorry, coming out of the paper over here, a hydrogen, straight line hydrogen, straight line hydrogen, and dotted line going back over here. What you've just said to me is that this is like 60 degrees away from this one. This one's about 60 degrees away, and this one's about 60 degrees away. Basically, it's almost like you took an umbrella and you reversed it and squished it all too close together. Valent shell, electron pair, repulsion. This should be totally wrong because they should be repelling and trying to keep as evenly spaced as possible. So don't do it like the bad one I just drew. Make sure you do it the right way. Now let's take a look at what happens when we substitute on, and we'll substitute out an atom and have it just be an electron pair. This category of geometries is going to have that happen pretty frequently. So you definitely want to be comfortable with it ASAP for this set. Now here's our starting one. We've got 
all four of these. In fact, we've got our carbon here in the center, hydrogens on the outside. You'll notice that it doesn't match the color scheme we use for the ball and stick models in class, and it doesn't matter. In fact, most of those kits will actually have a piece of paper with them specifying what the color scheme is supposed to be. So don't seize on the colors as telling you what the type of atom is. Just focus on the bonding types. So here we've got a tetrahedral electron group geometry and also molecular geometry. And just to emphasize it over and over again, I want to highlight verbally what I just distinguished was I said electron group geometry is tetrahedral. Molecular geometry is also tetrahedral. Now what happens if one of those was replaced by an electron pair? Well, you can see that we've got ourselves a nice little triangular base remaining. And it's kind of sticking up a bit, so it looks a bit like a pyramid with a triangular base, if we're talking about just the molecular geometry. And so that's exactly what our notation is going to be. It's going to be trigonal pyramidal. Make sure that you're okay with using the correct words for that. You don't say triangular pyramid. It's got to be trigonal pyramidal for it to be the correct answer. And the electron pair will just be sticking upward and outward. So electron group geometry, tetrahedral. Molecular geometry for this, trigonal pyramidal. And that's always true for our AX3E family of geometries. Now if we were to substitute in one more as an electron pair, Oh, look at that. We have another bent geometry. But notice, angle between each of these bonds is 109 degrees. So these will be 109.5 degrees apart, which allows us to distinguish between the bent V-shaped geometry here at 109.5 degrees versus the one we had for the three electron group family where we are at 120 degrees. That's why we have to be careful to pay attention to that angle. And for this new bent shape, it would be AX2E2.